Thank you, Lord, all the time. You know, uh, the Lord put on my heart uh, uh, about the prayer which the pastor had mentioned. You know, me and my wife. Uh, there's so many things that, that needs prayer. And I was, me and the pastor was talking, and we were saying uh, about, you know, you look at people, you don't know what's going on in their lives. It may look okay, they may not complain, but everybody have issues and every have, everybody have things going on in their life because we are of this flesh. Amen? And while we're in this world, there's things that we have to contend with. But we know that we have the victory and we can overcome those things. He says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen? It is not, this place is not our home. We're just passing through. That's all we're doing. All we got to do is hold on to God's word. Amen. And hang on to a promise. I heard a pastor also mention that whatever's going on in your life, go to the word of God and find that promise that pertains to that problem that you have. Because there is an answer to every problem that we may be going through. Amen? Every problem that we're going through, there's an answer. And what we're going to be studying tonight is, uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to uh, Numbers chapter 12, and we'll be reading that whole chapter. And then we'll go back and we'll talk about a few verses, and then we'll go home. Amen? But I was uh, reading this and, and getting uh, some revelation from the Lord, and the pastor had mentioned today about how we're celebrating our nation of the United States. Well, what we're going over today is a nation that was being, that was in process of being developed. And that is the nation of Israel. God was developing a people, and he was developing a nation. And whenever God develops a people... And we've read in the Old Testament, we read about the nation Israel. There's problems. Problems that have to be dealt with. It's like we have problems, and we just mentioned about things that need prayer about. Well, these problems here that Moses was to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, there was problems in doing that. And he encountered a problem here with leadership, he encountered a problem that he had to deal with. Now, you know this was not the only problem Moses had to deal with. Moses probably had to deal with numerous problems, a bunch of problems. And, you know, for him to deal with those problems there, I'm sure Moses had to go and he had to seek God, just like we talked about. Whatever problem that you have, seek God. Hear from God, not just from man, but you need to go to God because we have that one-on-one -on -one relationship that he left us the comforter that we may be able to seek him and we may be able to receive an answer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just quickly, though, Moses and, and Jesus, there's a contrast between the two, and I just want to mention that real quick, a contrast. Moses spoke to God, and God gave Moses direction, and he gave him instruction in how to lead a nation, how to direct and take a nation into another land that they're supposed to go to. He heard from God. He physically got instruction from God where he was able to lead the Israelites out of bondage, out of slavery from the Egyptians. That was a physical thing. Jesus, on the other hand, came here to save the world from their sins, to also lead, also lead people, the world, out of bondage, out of bondage into another land. And that land is the New Jerusalem. Amen? 
Moses freed the people physically from bondage. Jesus freed the people spiritually from bondage. That we may be free. That we don't have to be slave to sin. That we can overcome sin. And that we may be free. Even though that we are here in this world. Amen? But we are free. The Bible says those who are, Jesus comes to free those people. And whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen? A little bit of another contrast that Moses had to deal with in this chapter, he had to deal with leadership. And the kind of leadership wasn't rebelling, but opposing what Moses was saying and doing through God. Amen? Jesus, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in John 8, Pastor, we just did this in Life Builders, that they did not believe that he was the Son of God. I believe some believed he was the son of God, but did not want to accept that he was the son of God. Some was jealous of what God, this father, was doing with him. Amen? So you can see now, Jesus had to deal with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and Moses had to deal with his sister and brother. Sister and brother. Amen? Amen? Amen. So that's what we're going to be going over. But I, and another thing I, I just want to mention real quickly here. When I talked about Moses delivering the people physically out of Egypt and Jesus spiritually out of this world, the sins, forgiving our sins, amen, setting us free. It goes back to this one scripture when John the Baptist said that I baptize with water. And that's a physical thing. The spiritual thing that he said, but there's one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That is a spiritual thing. Amen? So there's a, there's a kind of a contrast between those two there. But the most important thing that I want you to remember, and it's something that we got to remember between Moses and Jesus himself, is they both heard from God. They both received instruction from God. Moses, throughout the whole Old Testament, the Lord says. That's what he told the people. That's the instruction that he got. Jesus, in John 8, and you will be blessed if you would read John 8. You need to read John 8. Write that down, John 8, and read that chapter. And you can see how Jesus dealt with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, how he dealt with them. But read John 8, because you'll see how close and separable that he was, because he was with God and he is God. Amen? John 8. Because he told those Pharisees that what you hear me say and what you see me do, I do of my father and not of myself. So Moses did things uh, that God instructed him to do. And we'll read chapter 12 and you'll see how God acknowledges that and how he tells and talks to Moses' sister and brother. Amen. Amen. Let's just read that and then we'll go back to some verses there. Numbers 12. And Miriam and Aaron spanked against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman and whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, have the Lord indeed spoke only by Moses? Had he not spoke also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord suddenly unto Moses and Aaron and unto Miriam 
Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of a cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And in the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed off the tabernacle. Behold, Memriam and, be, and became leprosy, white as snow, and Aaron and Memriam, and behold, she was leprosy. And Aaron said unto Moses, Allies, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we, would, we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, where he cometh out of the mother's womb. And Moses cried out unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father has spit in her face, shall she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Memriam was brought in again. And afterwards the people removed Hazio, Hazeroth, and pitched in the wilderness of Pharaoh. Amen. So you can see in that chapter there was a lot going on. I want to say this, that we are celebrating the United States, the birth of our nation. Amen. And in this verse, in these verses here, I want to point something out. There was sin. There was repentance. There was intercession. There was consequences. And there was mercy. I'm going to say this again. There was sin, which we all have. There was repentance, which we should all repent of. There was intercession, which God the Father is interceding on our behalf. To God, the, uh, Jesus is interceding on our behalf to God the Father. There was consequences, because when you sin, you may be forgiven, but there's also consequences. And at the end, we pray that God shows mercy. Because he said his mercy endures forever. And he will have mercy on who he should have mercy on. That is his choice. Amen. That's what we see in, these, in this chapter here. That Memorin and Aaron opposed Moses. Went against Moses. And it wasn't because... And it mentioned in here that who he had married. I don't believe that that was the only issue. They were jealous because of what they said. Has not God also spoke through us? He spoke through Moses, but he spoke through us too. So they approached Moses about that. Amen? There was jealousy. But let's go and dissect this chapter. Let's go to each verse of sin, repentance, intercession, consequences, and mercy. Amen? Because as a nation in the United States, I'll say this again, there is sin in the United States as there is in Israel. 
They should repent, and that's what we prayed about this morning, of sin. Intercession we didn't talk too much about, but we have a God that we need to intercede, intercede for us. Amen? Jesus is our intercessor. But there's consequences. And the United States will pay consequences. And there is somewhere in the Bible, I forget the exact place, these head of these nations who are not treating their people right, who are just concerned about themselves, money, who are doing evil, God will visit. And God will deal with them. Amen? He will deal with them. Amen. Okay, let's look at verse 2 first. Look at verse 2. And they said, Have the Lord indeed spoke only by Moses, hath not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. And the Lord heard that. You see, when they opposed Moses, they opposed God. They opposed God. Because it said that Moses did everything in God's household that he was asked to do. Whenever we do things in our life, and we are the people of God, and God called Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, he called us also. We didn't call him. The Bible says we didn't call him. He called us. And we answered the call. And so that means now that we are God's people and he will protect us, he will deliver us, he will stand for us. And anybody that goes against God's people, anyone that goes against God's people will have to deal with God. Jesus will stand for us. Amen? And so whenever them two went against God, opposed Moses, they went and they opposed, they went against God. And God didn't like it. And it said that God showed his anger. Can you imagine the pillar? And the pastor has a uh, the tabernacle. And he has the pillar, the cloud of the pillar over the tabernacle. Now it said in here that he withdrew from the tabernacle. Ain't that in there? That's what it says in here. He withdrew in, in, in verse 10. And the cloud departed off of the what? Tabernacle. It departed off the tabernacle. Amen? So, that was sin by them opposing Moses. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Repentance. Look at verse 11 and 12. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us where we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Aaron is asking for repentance for what they've done. He's asking God to forgive them because they know of the sin. You see, we all have a place in God. Amen? God called all of us to do something. All of us are not the pastor. There's one pastor. Amen? So we have a place. And the pastor and, and Jesus has a relationship as pastor and Jesus. As being part of the congregation, lay people, we have our relationship with Jesus as being lay people or whatever your gift may be. Amen? And we have to make sure that we do what he tells us to do. See, they were stepping a little bit out of bounds there. 
Amen? But Aaron knew that, and Aaron was asking for forgiveness, repentance. Amen? Verse 13, intercession. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. He was standing in intercession for his sister. He was asking God to heal her. Interceding for a need. Amen? We all have needs. And so he was interceding for his sister. In verse 15, 14 and 15, it says, for consequences, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had spit in her face, shall she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received again. In memory of was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. She was brought in again. Amen? That's God's mercy. That's God showing mercy on her. Now, let me explain to you about being spit on. This was interesting. Interesting. Someone being spit on in the face was considered the ultimate insult when somebody spit on you. It was an ultimate insult. It was a sign of shame of imposed on wrongdoing. The religious leaders, they spit on Jesus. Amen? They spit on him because it showed, because it showed a sign that he was a wrongdoer. Amen? And so they spit on him. And what it was is for seven days, then Jesus says that you will receive her after seven days. See, that was very bad for somebody to spit on a person back then because they was, did something wrong. Amen? So seven days they were supposed to receive her. And then after that, they would move on. That was just showing God's grace. That was showing God's mercy. Amen. On her. Amen. So this was uh, an incident that Moses had to deal with as a leader, as, as, as a person who had to seek God. Amen. Amen. So out of all of these things here, sin, repentance, intercession, consequences, and mercy, remember this. Make sure you remember this. That what Moses did was he always sought God. Let God have direct communication to Moses like he did his son Jesus. That we should seek God for whatever problem or situation that we're going through. Seek God and get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Get instruction. Seek a promise in the Bible and stand on that and hold on to that. Amen? These things that we went over here is the same thing that's happening in the United States. It's the same process. If there's sin, you have to repent of it. You need someone to intercede for you, right? We have Jesus, our intercessor, right? We have consequences behind the sin. Miriam's consequences behind the sin was leprosy. You know, it could have been a lot worse than that. But God had mercy on her. He had mercy on her. The United States, ourselves, there's consequences of our sins. Amen? But there's also, when we go through that process, and when he forgives us of our sins, amen, he shows mercy. That his mercy endures forever. Amen? Amen. Well, that's what I have for tonight. I don't want to keep you too long. But remember, God's mercy endures forever. And he will have mercy on who he will. Amen?
Amen. Praise the Lord.